Hey Morgan, I, thanks for taking my call. I'm going to see what I can do here for a quick video to kind of give you an idea of what um, our general contractors like about the program. So what I'm looking at, I have it opened already, is our, our basic estimating. But the question I asked you, which is I was curious about, was if you're, you're subbing out most of your work, this thing should work really well for you. Works like Excel, feels like Excel, but it's not. So a couple ways to do it. Like on this line, I'm just taking one sub price from a sub uh, concrete sub. Uh, his price to me, well, let me open this up a little bit here. At 3,200 square feet, he gave me a price of four and a quarter. So his price to me is the 13.6. I can put some more up in overhead. Uh, so for the CSI code 3,000, I've got a quote. Actually, we'll go pick somebody here. Um, thought I had one in there. Concrete. We'll use VI Concrete. So I got a quote from VI Concrete. This is the cost code that I want to put it in for my budget, and it's a cost type of four, which is a subcontract. Then the alternative is you could come down here, and a lot of the guys, our contractors, will do it this way, where they have a kind of a budget price going into the, looking by looking at the plans and kind of a historical budget. So they thought it was going to cost about 1950 They got three different prices from three different people. The only one that's going to count is the one I have a one in here, so it's going to extend that across. And I go through that for all of the different subtrades. The advantage here of using this is once I'm done, I go up here to say export. I can take all these numbers out to my budget. So my budget's already entered for the job once, once it's awarded. It's immediate, like one, two mouse clicks, I guess it is. Uh, and then when I'm ready to start issuing subcontracts, uh, I have a choice of either issuing the subcontracts by job or for a job in a phase. So if you have um, a multi-phase uh, project going on where you have multiple buildings and you're going in phases and the subcontract is just for the first building, you could just do it by phase one or phase two uh, and then they're done. And then we can print out your subcontract. All of the information is on it, ready to go. It hits the fax machine or the email or you print it out and mail it, but uh, they're all filled out. Nobody's gonna be typing in the job, the job name, the description and, and the amount of the contract. So. Uh, that's how our estimating works, and so the reason that people use it is because it, it does do a lot of different things here, where it eliminates a lot of the duplicate effort that you have today, and I'm not going to save this. Uh, the other thing they like about it, I'll show you just a couple different cost reports here, is um, one is the committed cost report. I'll just open this up real quick. So in this case, this is, happens to be a general GC job. These are the line items that I had on my job. This column here is my job budget that came from that estimate, plus any approved change orders. So they're in here. That's my budget. This is the cost that's come through the system so far. This column here, committed contract, these are all of the subcontracts that have been written, but I have not been invoiced for yet, so I have not received an invoice for my sub. And this column, pretty simple, it's just purchase orders that have been written, but have not been invoiced for yet. So. If I want to know how I spent, let's pick one here. If I want to know how I spent this $12,000, I can double click that. And those are the three vendors invoices that make up the $12,000. So easy to drill down, find the information. Same thing, if I want to drill down here and find out who the subcontract is with, I could drill back and find out who that subcontract is with. The other report that they use a lot is um, under the subcontracts here, this one here. So what we're looking at is a subcontract audit. It's for one job, job 27, for my electrical contractor. And if you see there's three line items up here, those were the original items on his subcontract that came from the estimate. Then he signed and we signed a change order, increasing his contract by another $500. So now I know his contract's 3,400. And we, whoops, I've sent him a second change order, change order number two, uh, for $1,850, but he hasn't returned it yet. But when he does, that'll move my contract now up to $5,250. And on the next page, I can see what invoices he sent to me, the amount of those invoices. And then here's a quick summary. Original contract, change orders, what he's invoiced me for date to date, and how much is sitting in accounts payable. So even though he's invoiced me, I haven't written the checks, but I can tell that all from one report.
it really makes your project manager's job a lot easier. And that same, um, let me go back in there. I can also do it this way, and the project managers like this one. Typically, your controller or somebody's on the phone with somebody, they would run that first report that I did. But uh, this is the one that a lot of other people run. And it's basically uh, what job, who it is, remaining subcontract, outstanding balance, uh, you know, and a original contract. So everything is here. It's a little busy, but then if you want to look at all of your subcontractors on one job, you could have all that right there in front of you. And actually, I ran all jobs, but it wouldn't be quite that long. So that's that. The other thing that they like, and again, I'm just showing you, there's maybe other things that you want, but these are the things I know that they really appreciate uh, after coming from QuickBooks, is let me just pull up a change order here. Um, so this is on one project. I got a phone call from the owner, let's say, and they wanted to upgrade the lighting or they just wanted to change out something. And so uh, I fill out this basic information here. And typically this would start out as open uh, for my data here. I have it approved. And then what kind of purchase, uh, what kind of change order it is. Uh, is it a goodwill? Was it because I had a buyout? Left it out of the estimate. Uh, the architect initiated, these are customizable by you, but there's ways to classify those for reporting. So in this case, on this tab here, I went out to my sub and said, hey, Samson, how much more will it cost to go from fixture A to fixture B? He come back, comes back and says, hey, it's $1,850. Um, he has subcontract 2100 which would be change order two for him, what cost code the budget goes to. And then on this tab, I go back to the owner, and he doesn't see this, I ask him for 2400 ECO approves 2300 and this is where the budget for the uh, revenue is going to go. Now, two things. There's a paper clip here in the top right, which is white, which means there's something behind it. I can now start attaching things to this actual change order. So things like an email uh, that comes in and says, please proceed with change order or whatever number this is, uh, 900. Uh, you can drag and drop that email from your Outlook in here so that you have a trail. Uh, if you want a copy of the plans where there was a plan change, uh, where there was a picture of uh, something that was broken and you're fixing it, uh, you could attach that picture. Or if you really want, when he signs that change order and sends it back, you can scan that in and attach a scan document here too. So your imagination is the only thing that's going to limit you here on what you can attach. And then it follows the uh, AIA uh, format. I'm just going to go down here real quick. So, you know, your logo, your name, Project, who it's to, the project information. And if you call yours change request or whatever, you can change a lot of this wording and formatting around. Uh, there's the lighting. If you had notes as to the specific picture or model number, you could put that in there. And then a summary, uh, like I said, in the AIA format where you take the original contract and roll it all the way forward to the new contract. And you can actually try and sneak a couple uh, extension days in here uh, on there as well. So that's that. So those are the things that the GCs absolutely use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, scheduling is part of our program. And I'm just going to pull up a schedule real quick here. Let's see, I think job two, four is good. So another general contractor job. Um, the items of work that have to be done, very similar to Microsoft Project if you use it. The days it's going to take to do each of those tasks. Uh, what kind of task is it? Am I doing it? Is the sub doing it? Is it ordering materials, which is a kind of a special item in its own? Start date. Uh, you get a couple things here. Uh, you get the Gantt chart like you would out of any system, so you can kind of see where you are and what's going on. Uh, you know, and let's just say, um, you know, it rained for a week and we couldn't get to the work or something happened. If I drag that out, obviously it moves everything out on the schedule. And if I move it back, it does the same thing. So, Here's why that's important. Remember now, on this grid here, if it was a sub, and I assign that work to the sub in here, and I said, that's Jansen Drywall. If I go back to this one, you know, on the electrical, it's probably Samson again. It's the only electrical contract. I, it's the only good electrical contractor I know. It is Samson. Um, so we have applied those to the right subs. What you're going to get for that on a weekly basis is a report that looks like this called subcontract notice. And so let's just say you have three, four, five jobs going on. 
Uh, you update all those jobs, you know, you drag and drop all those things or pushed out or pushed back. Uh, and then you can start producing reports that look like this. You know, again, your name, whatever, to Samson Electrical, these are the three jobs that are popping up on the schedule for the next week or two, long, whatever period you run this for. The items that were on his original subcontract and the date you want them in and the date you want them out. And so the nice part here is uh, it eliminates a lot of phone calls and, and radio messages and email. I mean, basically, it's a, a project notice telling them where you want them to be. Uh, and what we've done for other clients is that we've kind of added a box for them to sign and approve or to note where they couldn't make it. And then they fax it back. It eliminates a lot of phone calls and a lot of running around. So that's kind of in a nutshell uh, some of the things. I don't know how much you get into these, but we also have the opportunity to do RFIs, transmittals, submittals, uh, daily field reports, uh, punch list, and uh, correspondence we don't do in here anymore because we have that paper clip. And the other thing that I'm going to talk about now is attach it to the a PDF to the video is um, we're rolling out for Sage 100 here in about two months, give or take. It's, it's hard to tell with Sage. They tell us two months. Sometimes it's three. Sometimes it's one. So I'm splitting the difference here. It's a product called Sage Construction Anywhere that's going to allow you to uh, enter time on the job site and have it come directly back into the, to the system. Uh, if your project manager on the job wants to request a report and he has permissions to do that, He'll be able to request a report through a cloud server and have that report sent directly to him without having to call the office. But what it acts as, and where the most important part for you is, uh, if you're familiar with Dropbox, it's some, similar to Dropbox, but it's a lot better. Uh, and so you're going to be able to, up in the cloud, uh, have pictures, uh, copies of the plans, uh, working documents, uh, RFIs, transmitters. You can move all those up to the cloud. And then those box, those folders are secured uh, by individuals. So if you want your architect to see RFIs and pictures but not see transmittals, then he doesn't have permission for the transmittal folder. And so and it's by project, which you can't do a Dropbox. And so each project would have its own folders and security for each project. So uh, all those documents that you're trying to keep up with can now be installed in the cloud, accessible, really inexpensive to have. Uh, and the future for that product is, is, is pretty much endless as far as what it's going to be able to do. Um, at the next release, which is summertime, allow you to do your submittals, transmittals, and change orders in the field and have them entered automatically back into Sage 100, uh, where you're not going to have to worry about coming to the office to do those things. So your project manager is going to be able to stay mobile on site uh, and not in the office to get their job done. So uh, those are some of the things that are coming out. Anyway. It was an introduction, and I kind of went over more than I told I told you 10 minutes. I spent a few more than that, but uh, I'm going to send this to you. Have a look at it. If it makes sense, give me a call. Uh, we'll set up a demo where we can drill deeper into this product and answer more questions. Uh, and then I will also send you some information on that Sage Construction Anywhere. Hey, Morgan, thanks for watching. And if you need something, my name is Dennis, 800-659-5851. So uh, I think I told you the phone. We've got about 1,500 construction clients on Sage products. Uh, 1,300 plus are on this product that was formerly known as Master Builder. Now it's Sage 100. A little around a half. I want to say 40-something percent, maybe half, are general contractors. Uh, I've got everybody from a million dollars a year up to Hal Hayes, which is probably at this point one of our largest. Uh, they're, they're, they're well over 100 million, and, and, and this product's still working really well for them. I met with another GC that does a lot of um, shopping centers and stuff. They're probably north of 50 million this year, uh, and they're happy with the product as well. So give me a call. I hope I'd like to help you out. Thanks.